Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back to you with a brand new series. Today we are going to take a look at four stocks to potentially buy that are at or near their 52 week lows. I typically don't do videos like this, but I think it's a new series. I'm going to pump out every Saturday looking at just that stocks that hit 52 week lows uh, could be a huge opportunity for you that you might not want to miss. But before we get in the videos, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's taken the time to watch comment and like the videos and a special thank you to those who subscribe to the channel i really do appreciate it doing that really does help a small youtube channel out like me grow helps with the youtube algorithm and for those of you who may be stopping by for the first time on this channel we focused on dividend growth investing buying stocks in good companies that pay growing dividends and hold for the long term it's not rocket science in my opinion the best way to do anything keep it as simple as possible so it really boils down to consistently investing dollar cost averaging whether that's weekly whether that's monthly quarterly or yearly into dividend growth stocks and growing companies with positive cash flow that covers a dividend with a high return on their invested capital. I cover all my investments and activity in the portfolio on this channel every week, every Sunday morning. I do a portfolio update, so tune back in for those of you who are interested in that. I do not have a paid Patreon account, a paid paywall to access, or any other ways YouTubers use to charge you to see what they are doing. No courses to buy, bro. Uh, none of that. We all have enough to pay for, so it's free to see what I'm doing in my portfolio every week. Again, Sunday mornings at 7.30. Tune back in for that. But if you would like to help the channel, hitting that thumbs up down below. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the Vested Interest community and hit that notification bell. Make sure that bell is turned on so that you're notified whenever we put out any new content. Again, that really does help with the YouTube algorithms for a small YouTube channel like me. And it helps get the word out for us dividend growth investors who want to spread the word that in my opinion, this is the best way to get to financial freedom. Now let's jump into the video here. So first up, we are going to take a look at one out of the utility sector. We are talking about American States Water Company, ticker AWR here. Closed out the day on Friday, which was the last trading day at $72.18. That's February 23rd, 2024. So everything on here is as of you know, February 23rd. Uh, market cap of 2.67 billion. They are producing 595.7 million in revenue. Net income of 124.92 million. Uh, that shares outstanding, 36.98, which really doesn't mean anything unless you go look at uh, their historical trend. Are they, you know, deleting, diluting you as a shareholder? Or are they buying shares? We're not going to cover that really here. EPS earnings per share is sitting at $3.36 per share. Price to earnings $21.48 per share, which is a little high for utility companies unless they're growing really fast. And they even have a higher forward PE. So again, might be worth getting more into the balance sheet and seeing what's going on there. Dividend is $1.72. That's the annual dividend. They are quarterly payers, so you need to divide by four there. Uh, decent starting dividend yield, 2.38%. X dividend date was February 16th. Uh, they pay out in March, I believe. Uh, volume, average volume, we won't really cover that here in this, but we will look at the 52-week range. 52-week range as low as $72.16, as high as $95.08. Again, you can see that here over the last year, but they are definitely closer to their 52-week low than their 52-week high, right up against it, actually, two cents off. A beta of 0.44, so that's beta is about the volatility of the stock. One being the stock market, anything over one being more volatile, anything under one being less volatile. So this one is much less volatile than the overall market. Now we do have analysts that are calling this a sell. We're going to look at that analyst forecast over here for a minute. Uh, again, earnings date, February 21st. So they just had their earnings date here. So you might want to go look at that earnings report and see what they forecasted for the next year and how the overall earnings report shaped out. Now let's look at the uh, analyst forecast here. So average price target for AWR is $82.50. So they see it right here, price target, $82.50. So they see it with 14.3% upside from here. Though the analysts are calling it a consensus sell. Only two analysts, so keep that in mind. There's not a lot of eyes on this one, at least according from stockanalysis.com, where I pulled this information. Only two analysts. Revenue growth is forecasted to grow 2.18%. Earnings per share growth is at 2.9%. I typically like 5% or better for uh, forecasted revenue growth or EPS growth. And really, I like much higher revenue growth than 2.18%, but at least it's positive. Let's keep going here on American States Water Company, again, out of the utility sector. So you can see here the revenue chart. Nice, steady revenue growth. Looks like starting about, what is that, 2012. 
kind of leveled off, dropped off for a few years, and now it is starting to grow again. But overall, it is pretty much up and to the right. So big jump up this past year might be part of the reason they're seeing a bit of a turn down next year to get back in line with what's really their average. That is a big jump up for any one year. So you have to understand what's going on there. But overall, like I said, nice steady growth. And that's what you want to see with utility companies. They typically have nice steady growth up and to the right. You're going to look at the margins a little bit. 64.67% with operating profit margins of 33 points. So you can look down here. Gross margin, 64.67%. Operating margin, 33.03%. Pre-tax margin, 27.95%. Profit margin sitting above 20%. EBITDA, I, for those of you who like this metric, 42.39%. EBIT, 35.13%. And free cash flow margins are in the negative. So that's probably where they're seeing some of this downturn, right? Some of this free cash flow drop off from year to year. And that's probably because you had an outstanding year, which will be followed by a less outstanding year. You see here the dividends, 2.38%, annual dividend $1.72. Uh, a lot of this information was covered on the previous slide, but we'll cover it again. February 16th is the ex-dividend data. They pay, pay out in March, if I'm not mistaken. Now, here's some information that we haven't seen. Payout ratio is low. I like 75% or less. They're at 51.19%. Lots of room to increase that dividend. And for a utility company, this is actually a very good payout ratio. Dividend growth is at 8.35%, so nice high single digit dividend growth as well nice revenue growth nice dividend growth to match uh, overall short of the free cash flow margins decreasing this does look good i the two analysts like i said call it a sell but they see a 14 percent upside in the stock price at least over the next year so that is the first one a utility company american waterworks might be worth taking a look at let's keep going here Next, we are going to take a look at the Wendy's company. This is probably one you're familiar with. You might eat Wendy's burgers or uh, kids meals or like their shakes, uh, whatever they are. That's Wendy's. That's who they are. Uh, ticker W-E-N. This is out of the consumer discretionary sector. Close out the day on Friday, at, uh, February 23rd, $18.29. Market cap of $3.77 billion. Revenue of $2.18 billion here. Um, outstanding stairs again doesn't really mean anything unless you look and see if they are diluting shares or they're buying shares back or they're staying flat net income of 198 198.78 million dollars eps sitting at 0.94 so 94 cents per share price to earnings ratio this is a little better 19 dollars and 46 cents per share anything under 20 really in this market seems to be pretty good and i do like that their forward pe is lower than their current PE. So they even are going to get less expensive as far as a price per earnings share basis. Dividend is $1, right? They are a quarterly payer. Very high starting dividend yield on this one, 5.47%. Ex dividend date was February 29th. I believe they are also a March payer. Uh, we're not going to go over the volume. That's just trading volume. Not really worried about the previous close or the days range, but I do like to look at the 52-week range. They as low as $17.64, as high as $23.90. Another one, again, if you look over the last year, pretty much a sell-off throughout the whole year. A beta of 0.83, so less volatile than the overall market. Now, the analysts call it a consensus buy. Let's go over here and look at this analyst forecast. Now, they do have a few more analysts that have taken a look at this. They have 18 analysts that have taken a look at this. They have a price target of $21.80. So price target difference is 19.19%. So the previous one, we saw a 14% price target difference. So 14% upside. This is 19% upside, a little more than 19%. Revenue forecasted growth, even higher at 4.26%. This is getting more in line with what I like to see for revenue growth. And EPS growth is 13.11%. That's smoking high for uh, earnings per share growth. I like 5% or better, so much higher than what I'm looking for even though Wendy's is not really a company that I'm looking at. Uh, maybe you're a person who likes to invest in companies like that. Some people like uh, McDonald's, for example. Wendy's would be comparable to like McDonald's, Burger King, uh, Tim Hortons, those type of fast food places. Now we'll keep going here. Again, we're going to look at the revenue. Now this is a bit, looks cyclical, right? You've got some ups and downs here. This might be where they've closed or uh, gotten rid of some underperforming locations. But so far, or overall, Right here, you can see over the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years, nice forecast growth up and to the right. So 
I'd have to go back in time or you'd have to go back in time and look and see what's really going on here. It looks like they really peaked 2010 to 2015 and then have been coming down through, like I said, in, in the last seven years back up again. So cyclical might just be the nature of their business, but definitely cyclical in nature going back to 1995. Margins here, let's look at this. Gross margin, 37.96%. Very nice gross margins. Operating margin, 17.4. Pre-tax, 12.41. 9.13. EBITDA, 24.75. Free cash flow margin is positive on this one, 11.74. So good numbers overall. Five very high starting dividend yield, 5.47%. Annual dividend, $1 divided by four. So basically you're getting a quarter per share, uh, four times a year. X dividend date, February 29th. I believe they also pay out in March. Now, this is where I think quarterly payer, this is where things get a little rough. Payout ratio above 100%, 106.38%. That's not good. Dividend growth of 60%. Well, I don't know how they're growing dividend if they have a payout ratio above 100%. So they are paying 100% of free cash flow plus some in dividends. So they're either taking on debt or uh, throwing more shares into the market, something to offset that 6.38% because you can't pay 100% of free cash flow for very long without taking on debt or doing something. So I like the dividend growth, but with 106.38% payout ratio, this one looks like to me that it may be in jeopardy of cutting the dividend. So Wendy's, because of this, uh, I would watch for a couple quarters and see what's going on with this one. If this payout ratio was to come back down, then the numbers look more enticing. But right now that would be a big red flag for me. So let's keep going. That's Wendy's. Next one is Pfizer. This is one in my portfolio. I do not own Pfizer. This is out of the uh, pharmaceutical, a biopharmaceutical company out of the healthcare sector, ticker PFE. Close out the day on Friday, February 23rd at $27.76. Market cap of $156.74 billion. Revenue of $58.5 billion. Uh, $2.12 billion in net income. Shares outstanding. Again, you'd have to go in and look and see if they're diluting you as a shareholder or not. Another one, if you look at the one-year chart, pretty much a sell-off over the last year. Is this the bottom? Uh, you know, that's the thing we're looking for. Is it the bottom? Is it going to turn out around from here, right? It's always a, the where the guessing game comes in, and all we can do is look at the overall fundamentals of the company and see if it, even if it is at the bottom, is it worth investing in, right? Because it can always go lower. Don't think a company can't go lower just because you think it's at the bottom. That's not necessarily true. But let's keep going. EPS sitting at 37 cents per share. PE ratio extremely high on this one, 75.03. That seems like a very, very high PE ratio. I do like the forward PE looks much lower at $12.46 per share. So currently looks like a very high PE ratio, but it looks like going forward, that's going to turn around a little bit and get much better. Dividend $1.68, a 6.05% starting dividend yield on this one. Very high. X dividend date, January 25th. Another one I believe pays in March. Actually, may pay in uh, may pay in February. I need to look at that. Drop a comment down below if, if this one pays in February. I believe this one might pay in February, but it could be in March as well. Uh, average volume, I'm not interested in. I'm not a trader, so I'm not really looking at that. 52-week range, I am $25.76, as high as $42.22. So with a low of $25.76, it is just bounced off of that 52-week low and recovered just ever so slightly, but still definitely closer to their 52-week low. A beta of 0.57, so another one less volatile than the overall market. The analysts call it a buy. Price target is 36.88. Again, we can go over here and look at that. X earnings date was January 30th, so that one just happened a month ago. You might want to look at that as well. Let's go over here and look at the analyst forecast. Price target of $36.88. Price target difference, they see potential of 32.85% upside. Analyst consensus is a buy. 16 analysts have taken a look at this. Revenue growth forecasted at $2, or, or I'm sorry, 2.28% over the next five years with extremely high earnings per share growth forecasted over the next five years at $58 or at 58.51%. Extremely high. And this company has made a bunch of acquisitions over the last couple of years. So they may be seeing a lot of those acquisitions starting to pay off over the next five years because that is extremely high, right? This EPS of 0.37, 37 cents per share, growing at 58.51% over the next five years, extremely high. That is a lot of shareholder value coming back if that really uh, pans out that way. Let's keep going here.
So Pfizer here, you can see the revenue chart. Again, this is, as a lot of healthcare companies, going to be a cyclical company. You can see here pretty much nice up and to the right till about 2011. Looks like they peaked at 2011, started coming back down uh, till about 2020. Now you can see huge jumps up here in 2022 and 2023. This is gonna be the CV19 spike, right? Now it looks like if you were to go off of this slow growth here, take out these two years that are kind of way out, out there and look where it is back in 20, 21, 22 or 2023 here, that's more in line with growth again. So if you look at these two years as aberrations with the CV19 spike, they are starting to grow with in line with what they were before those two. So I don't mind the revenue growth. I'd like to give them a little bit of time. Again, I am long this one. I am nibbling on this one or will be nibbling on this one, bringing down my cost basis. Now let's look at the margins. Gross margin, 57.34%. Operating margin, a little lower than I'd like it at 1.81%. Pre-tax margin, same thing, 1.72%. Profit margin is a bit low, 3.62%. EBITDA, 12.47%. EBIT, 1.72%. And free cash flow margin is positive at 8.19%. Very high dividend yield, 6.05%. Annual dividend, $1.68. X dividend date, January 25th. I believe they are a February or March payer. Drop a comment down below and correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, I believe it is March actually, but it could be February since their X dividend date. Usually if the X dividend date is January, it's the uh, following March or following month, I mean. Now, same thing here. Payout ratio, 454.05%. They are doing something to maintain this dividend and they do not have much dividend growth at 2.48%. So this one, even though it's in my portfolio, is on my watch list over the next several months to see how this payout ratio shakes out. It cannot stay above this for very long, or I will be looking to cut this one out of my portfolio. And if it stayed above 100%, it would not be one I would recommend adding to your portfolio unless they cut the dividend, brought the dividend yield down, brought this payout ratio down significantly, and then moves forward again. So this one is on my uh, potential to add. I mean, like I said, my cost basis is pretty high, so I may nibble two, three shares here and there. I'm running options on it right now to try to generate some additional uh, uh, revenue. But this is a bit concerning, very concerning, actually. So that is Pfizer. And last on our list seems to be a favorite of everyone right now, Archer Daniels Midland Company, ticker ADM. This is out of the consumer staples sector, I believe. Uh, closed out the day, February 23rd, $53.45. Market cap of $28.51 billion. Revenue of $96.90 billion. And before we go too far, I will say they've had some accounting issues. Uh, one of their CEOs or, or FCOs, financial uh, accountants, was fired or let go or resigned because he was cooking the books, it looks like. I think the government's even investigating them right now to see how uh, deep that goes. They have a couple of different arms. They want to make sure it's just isolated to the one particular faction of the group. That's about 20% of their revenue. Uh, so there are some issues with this one here is what I'm trying to say. Shares outstanding, same thing. You'd have to go in and look at their shares declining or increasing. Their earnings per share EPS is very high at $7.18 per share. Their price to earnings ratio very low at $7.44 per share. Forward P is a little higher at $9.10 per share. Dividend is $2. Again, quarterly payers divide by four. Nice starting dividend yield, 3.74%. X dividend date, February 7th. March payer, I believe. Uh, average volume, I'm not interested. Let's go down to 52-week range. As low as $50.72, as high as $87.30. Again, another one. I apologize. I should have went to the year chart. I only went to the day chart. But this one is another one that's definitely over the last year come down. Beta of 0.76, less volatile than the overall market. Analysts call it a hold. Uh, price target $66.36. We'll see that over here. And earnings date is coming up March 5th. So you definitely want to look at this one here in the next week or two to see how the earnings date shakes out. Now, they have a price target of $66.36. So they see 24.15% upside. They do call it a hold. They have 11 analysts that are taking a look at this. Revenue growth is forecasted to be negative, negative 2.11%. I don't like that. Earnings per share uh, forecasted growth over the next five years, negative 8.34%. Don't like that. I do not like these metrics at all. That's not good. Typically, if you have decreasing revenue, uh, you have a decreasing stock price. 
Now, if we look at revenue, right, you can see here going up to about 2014, 15, uh, 2014 right in here they peaked out looks like they came back down to about 2021 and have started to grow again but again I would be uh, very hesitant on these and I would want to see what's going on with the uh, investigation into the, cooking their books and see if these numbers were even accurate you know maybe it was supposed to be down in here somewhere uh, this one I would do more research on for sure find out what's going on uh, you can see the margins over here, 7.78%. If you believe them, 7.78%. Operating margin, 4.04%. Uh, Pre-tax margin, 4.91. Profit margin, 4.06. EBITDA, 6.62. EBIT, 5.55. Free cash flow margin is 0 0.50. Again, dividend yield, 3.74%. Annual dividend, $2. Ex-dividend date, February 7th. They pay in March. Uh, very low payout ratio, 27.86% with 12.12% uh, dividend growth. So... If you uh, are looking for some or one that you think has a low payout ratio with high dividend growth, but you know, and low margins might be one worth throwing on the watch list or throwing on your buy list. Archer of the four, it's kind of why I put them in this order. Uh, this would probably be my least favorite. I would probably be leaning towards Pfizer, just knowing what I know about them and all the acquisitions they've made over the last several years and the anticipation that some of these acquisitions will pan out over the next couple of years. I think they're uh, relatively undervalued. I do not like the payout ratio of Pfizer, but other than that, uh, it is one in my portfolio. It's one that's going to stay in my portfolio unless the payout ratio remains above 400% for uh, you know the next couple quarters, then I might reevaluate. Well, let me know what you think of those four companies down below. Are they in your portfolio? Are they ones you're adding to? Are they ones you're looking to add to your portfolio? If they are not in them, I would always appreciate you uh, stopping by and let me know what you think. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. And hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever we put out any new content. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. Uh, and this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great weekend. And let me know what you think of this series. Is it one you'd like to see me continue? Are you even interested in companies at 52-week lows? Uh, or is it just not something that you're concerned with or look at? I like to look at 52-week lows because it gives me some ideas of companies to do some research on and see if they are presenting any value. That's why I like them. Let me know what your thoughts are. And we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in the presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm willing to share my opinion and investment journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk against money. You never invest any amount. Not comfortable losing it. Always do your own research. Must be in your situation. Circumstances. Select criteria. Set the advice. Come certified financial advisor.